get out rebounded by 15, give up 50% shooting in Georgia, but you find a way to win the game. Yeah, crazy, right? I would have never thought it. I told us when I told our guys when we were going into the overtime, as I looked at the numbers, they were shooting. You know, we hold them to one for six, so that we got them under 50% finally in the overtime. But I said, really, it was a gift. You know, we just found a way to try to extend the game. Uh, Marshall was down on himself for missing that layup, which would have given us maybe a win in regulation. And I said, really, the reality is, if you look at the numbers, it's a gift that we're where we are. Let's find a way to win the game. And the way we did it was defensively. We finally got some stops. I think we secured some rebounds. We probably out rebounded them in overtime. Um, and we and we made foul shots. Obviously, it helps when you get Marshall at the foul line. But I thought Reg had two huge uh, foul shots at the end. We were able to manufacture enough to get it done. Maybe I was reading it wrong, but it just seemed early in the game emotionally it was kind of off and on for a while. I mean, what what did you think finally spurred it? It seemed to be more consistent. You like. know what? I, you know what? I, it's it's hard sometimes for me to realize it because I am right in the middle of the trenches all every day. But I'm still dealing with young guys, man, kids ultimately, and you'd be amazed at how quickly confidence wanes. I didn't think we were playing with much confidence. It was almost as if um, we were trying to, to win the game, but playing not to lose as opposed to being aggressive. Georgia, on the other hand, you know, we've lost four out of five coming into the night. They had won five out of six, including five in a row prior to their last outing. They were playing with a lot of confidence, and in that five winning streak for them, that three of them were on the road. So they had a three-game road winning streak, and they came out and attacked us. I thought we had opportunities in the first half we were up five had an opportunity for a steal in the open floor they got most of the 50 50 balls i thought they hit a bunch of timely threes off offensive rebounds off deflections uh, and as a result we go in with a little bit of a hole but um, i thought we came out and battled much better in the second half couldn't get a stop contavious caldwell pope is is a first round pick and, and that's what first round picks look like he made some hard shots now as you look at his numbers he's seven for 19 but he goes for 19 and 12 and made huge plays for him uh, at the end, we tried to deny him the ball as much as possible and make other guys make plays. Well, yeah, sometimes I think Marshall's, Marshall's desire, you know, we, we've talked about it from day one, Parrish. Marshall and, and Murph are really our swag. They're our energy. You know, they've got an infectious energy. Murph has not brought that because he has not played well. He knows that. He knows time's ticking against him, you know, as a fifth-year senior. Uh, and so – he made some plays for us down the stretch, but he's not playing as exuberant uh, as, as he was early in the year. Marshall, it's hard to, to, to really play with a lot of confidence when you're sitting over there by me. Picked up two fouls. You know, the game was a one or two possession game in the first half, so I'm trying to get us to the half because I know how valuable he is. Then he picks up his third maybe in the first two minutes of the second half. We gambled a little bit and put him in there, and I thought he did a good job. But he's the guy now that, that – he's our playmaker. You know, not only with his ability to score, but he does things off the ball as well, which are huge for us. Just talk about Nick Williams' performance, his defensive at play and everything. Well, I thought Nick was good for us early. Uh, he's a solid senior, a guy that's been there, done that. You know, we went one and three. Uh, we were one and three prior to tonight with A.J. not being on the team. And, and, you know, Nick missed a couple of games. He's just now, in my opinion, getting back into rhythm. He still seems a little rushed, but tonight I thought he had better rhythm. Hey. Yes, sir. Yeah, you know, and, I, and I, I started Millinghouse, as you guys know, and that was simply because I, Derek, I thought deserved it with the way that he played in the second half against A&M. I thought Jarvis was flat. Jarvis responded, as I, I was hoping he would. Uh, started him in the second half, and I don't think I took him out of the game. And we were trying to get him some things at the basket. There was some contact. He couldn't finish oversized, but he continued to battle and battle and battle. And he's our quarterback. He's our leader. He's a guy that has to be productive for us. Andy, in order for this game to bleed into next week, what has to happen? Well, uh, I, I, I really believe this, and, and my boss and I were talking about it right after the game, and I just shared it with the teams. As, as painful as that was at times, you know, back and forth, back and forth, we would all love to just roll it out there and win by 20. This was what we needed. Uh, I felt it was, as, as, it was as if we had flatlined and they brought out the paddles and just, boom, jolted us back to life. There was energy in the locker room. It wasn't. Uh, I, I, like it was the last time we won. When we beat State, it was just kind of whole hum and we weren't feeling real good about the way we played. Those guys had energy, and I think this is the impetus that we need to finish the season strong. Along those lines, Andy, when Caldwell Pope hits the three to put them up eight, 250 or so to go, did you sense any panic? And looking back now, are you, are you surprised that that ended up almost being a wake-up call? You know what, I, I, don't, I really haven't sensed much panic. Uh, sometimes I, I'm not sure that's a good thing, you know, because a, a sense of urgency I think is good for a team. I never sense panic out of this group. 
I was just trying to implore them in that huddle to get some stops. We just were very lethargic, allowing them to attack us. Uh, once we got the game back even, I just felt like we had more swagger defensively, and we were doing a better job of containing the dribble. We were doing a better job of getting – uh, getting the ball off our defensive glass, and then, again, we were able to manufacture enough points to, to find a way to win. With Marshall, does, does this team take on his personality when things are going well, when he's getting fired up, when he goes and runs down there, makes the M1 layup? Did, does the team feed off of that, and was that important for them? Well, you know, we, we run a lot of offense through Marshall, not only for him to make shots, but also for him to get angles so he can get to the foul line as he did tonight. And also, to, he attracts so much attention. We have to do a better job of recognizing and playing behind him. I didn't think we did that very well early in the second half. I thought we were more effective.